to our last live stream from Adobe Max in Las Vegas. We're so excited to be here. I'm Ari, and this is Brooke Di Donato. Hi. <laughs> and she creates amazing visual art through photography. She's going to take us through her process, and I can't wait to show you all what's going to happen here. It's not magic. That's what we're <laughs> going to show here. It's just a magic brain using tools. <laughs> Um, so Brooke is based in New York, but you're from Ohio, right? Yes, from Ohio. So let us know in the chat, where are you from? New York or Ohio? Maybe someone from Las Vegas or San Francisco, where I'm from? Let us know. Hi, Joseph. Okay, so let's get started. So what are you going to show us today? Um, so today I'm going to show you um, a couple different things. There's two images that I'm hoping to work on. Um, one of them involves just sort of like my my basic workflow which is usually uh, a lot of like color correcting toning uh, bringing out detail and shadows bringing down highlights um, and you can see this is sort of a before um, this is just the raw file right out of my camera and then this is actually the image from my website wow. um, so I've done obviously a lot of stuff with her with her clothing color um, some cleaning up Obviously, yeah. it completely changed like the, the tones of the greens to match, I guess, kind of my palette that I stick to. Um, and then the other image I was going to show you was is sort of um, like creating, I guess, expanding uh, an environment because I think that's something that I use a fair amount. I'm not necessarily like creating an image from scratch, but I'm taking an image and seeing um, how I can sort of build. Here's the original. And then this is uh, wow. sort of the environment that I built around it. So um, I think maybe we'll just jump right in and yeah. start with the. Um, Let's start. Start with the. So you took that photo in a studio. Yeah. So this is shot at a studio in Queens that I. Um, it's like a rental space. They have a big psych. Uh, I like shooting there. And I basically did actually like a like an Instagram open call where I uh, was like, hey, does anyone want to model? And um, this girl's really sweet, and she actually brought this really cool uh, like swimsuit thing with her. She thought it kind of fit my aesthetic, and yeah. I was like, this is awesome. We have to like use this in some capacity. So. So you we, didn't even tell her what to wear. No, I didn't. I never really tell people what to wear. I tell them like simple is good. Um, I maybe tell them like a few colors that I'm thinking yeah. and I'm a total sucker for weird patterns so if I feel like someone has that I definitely am like I encourage them bringing it but um, a lot of my work is, is really like inspired by uh, I guess what I find whether that be like an interesting location or an interesting outfit that someone's wearing it's it's um, it, I guess it's it's weird I used to draw everything out and plan it out and it's become a lot more fluid in the last two years uh, and I'm enjoying that process I think it's like it's a balance I still do if I'm doing a client job I there's obviously more preparation than Definitely. if I'm shooting personal work but. all right so we have people from Florida Kiev, Ukraine, Lima, Peru, Colombia, Rome, Tunisia, Iran. This is really awesome, guys. I'm so excited to have people from all over the world. And first question, what camera are you using to shoot these images? Um, so this image actually was shot on a uh, Sony RX1, which is like basically a really small point and shoot with a fixed uh, 35 lens. Um, some of my more recent work is shot on an A7 because my RX1 died. Oh. <laughs> um, but but like I, but I wouldn't. I I also like I, I say this a lot, and I think it rings true. I wouldn't stress too much about cameras. Um, I think like I've shot great pictures on Nikon cameras. I've shot great pictures on my phone, and I think like you really want to just find like what uh, I guess translates what you're trying to do the best. I prefer to have actually like a smaller camera, partially just because I'm a small person and I feel like it's yeah. really weird if I'm shooting someone with some huge, it's this, this weird barrier and I like yeah. to feel like there's not much between me and the subject. Um, but I think like I have a friend who shoots celebrity portraiture and like he does like crazy big setups and he kills it. Like it's, he's so good at it and I think it's you have to find your comfort, you know, what do you like? and 
sort of find something that's an extension of what you're trying to trying to do. All right. Yeah, we have a lot of different cameras in the chat: Nikon, Canon, and. I think that's great advice from Brooke. So, are we going to look at how you started and then how you ended up? What's the process? You yeah, have yeah. This raw so, image. well, let me show you guys first. Um, I'll open my raw image, and you can see. Let me first show you guys the PSD file here because I think it's kind of interesting to see it in reverse. So, if I start taking off these layers and like really stripping all of this away, you can start to see all of these little adjustments that were made. Whoa. And now we're kind of back to the original image. So when I opened it in Camera Raw, um, which let me just do for you guys again real quick, um, kind of what I was talking about earlier is the first thing that I try to do is uh, really just go in and you can see if I reset this, I try to go in and bring out all these detail because it's like the shadows are just so dark and the highlights are blown out, and I really want to, you know, I want to be able to see the detail in her skin if I zoom in. Um, and I also don't, I'm not, you know, I want to get some some information back in here. I don't want this to just be black. Yeah. So um, that's kind of my first step is just going into like these here, and I adjusted my highlights here. You can see I brought out my shadows, uh, brought out my blacks, and I usually do a little bit of lens correction in here. Um, the, the Photoshop actually has all of these like um, lens corrections built in, which is really great. So it doesn't really matter what camera model you have. They probably already have a, um, like a preset for it. And so you can usually just go in here and you can see that's sort of like fixing some of this distortion that's happening oh. on the edges of the image. And it also helps with that vignette that's, that's happening. That's great. Um, so then that's kind of my like first step. So then we open the image, and we look back over here. Um, this is actually, this photo is like a slightly, it's actually like an outtake, so this one is slightly different. So you can see here, um, I removed like this leg of the, of the, okay, I see. of the softbox, but over here we don't even have that, so I wouldn't even worry about that. So sort of the first thing I did here is if we make a new hue saturation layer um, and we go in and I actually want to take and pick this color from her clothing. So I grab my color selector, make sure you're on your, your right layer here and click here. Making sure you're on the right layer is key and it's not easy when you're first starting out. It is definitely not. I always find myself on the wrong layer. <laughs> so then if we make a new layer here, we can actually go in and just start turn up my opacity and I can actually just oh, paint okay. right on this layer. Dari, keep letting us know where you're from in the chat. Everyone in the chat is debating about cameras, what their favorite cameras are. <laughs> and lenses. There's infinite options. Everywhere. There is. Wolverhampton, England. Hi, Adrian. Kuwait, Ohio to LA, says Cody. Okay. All right. And Brooke is from Ohio too. Mexico. So who is a photographer on the chat? Let us know. Do you use Photoshop? What do you do to your photos? Do you create visual art like Brooke? Tunisia, Syria, Poland, Egypt. I love how late people stay up too. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's definitely middle of the night there. Okay, so you're painting around. Yep. So we're still kind of trying to get a good selection on this. And 
is this work you're doing, for example, this picture that you did, was it for a client or was it something you did? This was just, just personal work. Like, okay. just I try to constantly be shooting um, because a lot of my personal work leads to licensing things and like other opportunities. So I think like, um, regardless of what type of photography you shoot or if it's weddings, um, fine art, product, whatever, it's, you, you have to just constantly be doing it because it's, you, can't, you can't afford to um, be like a sitting duck just waiting for work to come. So, I, so I like to sort of just always be, I also love it. So I, you know, I like to be doing it all the time. Um, so this was just a fun project. Uh, it led to something that was uh, sort of like, I have had people pull this as like a treatment for other projects I've done though. So people have okay. seen this and then been like, oh, we have this thing and yeah. we like this treatment. Can you do something similar? So it's interesting how that works. Like, you never yeah. know. Laura said, how do you change brush size so quickly? Um, it's actually the the brackets on the keyboard. Oh, so I'm just, she's using the bracket keys as a shortcut. Yeah, so it's like a quick, a quick thing. Um, I'm also editing on a trackpad right now, which I don't recommend to anyone. <laughs> it's like, my carpal tunnel is like out of control, but um, it's it's a bad habit and I'm quickest with it because yeah. I did it for so long. So like the learning curve on like a Wacom or like another device is, it's like, it slows me down and I, totally. I just end up doing this, but. So we have Hassan and Austin who are photographers, Artur, graphic designer. That's great. Oh yeah, Sir Don knew about the brackets. Oh good, good. Laura uses a trackpad too. Yeah, it's hard to get used to a new way of doing things once you're really fast at something. It really is. Um, okay, so we have kind of now like this, this blue that we pulled from her clothing. Um, obviously I've completely painted over this photograph so it's like you can't see anything underneath. Um, so one thing I play around with a lot is if you go into the blending modes of the layers, you can um, change sort of how this layer is affecting the rest of the image. Uh, if you select color, you can see all of a sudden it's only changing the color now. So like everything is still under my image. Whereas, you know, if you keep it on normal, you're, the detail's gone. So yeah. I often go in here, change that to color, and now you can see we're starting to get to um, sort of this effect. Um, obviously we have a long way to go, but Okay, so if you didn't catch that, instead of just leaving the painted over image with no depth, Brooke went into the blending modes and selected color, and now we get that shadow. That's great. Joseph is a designer. Shiraz says, good tips, thanks. Thanks for watching. Okay, so um, now we're gonna build this, this kind of like wall that I have behind her. Okay. Um, so I made a new layer and I'm gonna go in and kind of just pick a, a yellowish color that's pretty close to what I used. Um, and there's no like rhyme or reason to why I picked that color. I just really liked it. <laughs> Thought it was yeah. kind of matched her skin tone nicely. Um, And then we're sort of doing the same thing. We're gonna go back in here and, and start painting again with our brushes. That's the fun part. Yeah. Argentina, Gaspar, good to see you. Okay, so we're painting the other side. So did you go to school for photography? Um, I went to school for photojournalism, actually. Okay, photojournalism. So um, it's, it's uh, basically I was trained to like shoot for a newspaper um, or some sort of like news outlet, I guess. Yeah. And I did that for a little bit and um, I realized pretty quickly that I, I just didn't enjoy it and I kind of wanted to do things that were, um, I guess, like less concerned about uh, 
being objective because I think that's like such a big part of journalism is mm. you're, you have to be unbiased and um, I kind of wasn't, I didn't want my photography to have to be, uh, you know, in line with that and so I kept doing my journalism work but I started, uh, I started making like self-portraits on the side just as like a practice thing and then um, I guess after a few years of doing that, um, I just stopped doing the journalism stuff and kept doing this. Um, and now this is like, you know, primarily my what I do. So yeah, that's great that you could do something you really like. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a progression. I think like it's if I didn't do journalism, I may I may not have ever found this. So it's kind of trial and error. Totally. Rob is mean mugging you. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Greetings from Jordan. Hi, Omar. Hi, Hamza. Are you asking how you can do this editing? Brooke is going step by step. She started with a raw image that was taken in a photography studio in Queens. And she's showing how she turns that into her visual art, which is more abstract. And um, the way she started was that she just had an open call for models. Someone came in, they were, happened to bring the swimsuit, and that inspired her for the colors and the aesthetic that she brought into this image. our last live stream at Adobe Max. I'm so glad we have so many of you still joining and watching. And we're definitely feeling that like it's the last day. <laughs> it's been a long three days. Hence the coffee. Brooke needed the coffee. Matt asks, why don't you use the pen tool? The pen tool? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if I have a specific reason. I guess, um, oh, you mean for the selections? Yeah. Is that what he's referring to? Um, I like the quick select tool, and then I use the inverse a lot. So I'll go into select and then inverse. Um, I have no problem with the pen tool. I would use the pen tool depending on, I guess, like what it is. But for organic forms, like um, her body, I think the quick select tool is usually pretty accurate. And then I'll go in and kind of refine my, um, we'll mask these later and make them more refined with like a brush. Um, but the pen tool is great. I mean, all the all the selection tools work together. I don't, or, sorry, not, the, not these, these. All the selection tools work really well together and I don't use just one. It just, it depends what I'm working on. So. That makes total sense. Joshua said, where do you go to search for models for your projects? Um, I have used Instagram a lot lately. It, that's been a big source. Um, I also shoot a lot of people who aren't necessarily, they're not professional models. Um, so like friends, family, um, friends of friends. Uh, I've been shooting a lot of dancers recently. I have a friend who's a, he's like a really talented dancer and he's been sending other dancers to me. Uh, so that's great. It's sort of like word of mouth, I guess. Yeah. And then a little bit of, uh, I, I do some uh, like open calls on Instagram just because it's, it's cool to meet people from the internet. Like it's just. Yeah. So do you just put it in your Instagram comment of a picture? Like. Um, yeah. I'll say like looking come. for faces, like don't be shy. Anyone can. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I get like a variety of people and I've actually never had a bad experience. I mean, you would think it's sort of like kind of a creepy thing. Like are you people alone are just showing. When they come? Well, it's like a rental space in the city. There's cameras everywhere. It's like it's yeah. very. You know, I wouldn't bring them to like my home. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> like. I hope you're not doing. That. No, I'm not doing that. I'll come um, protect you. <laughs> but it's. Uh, but I've. Ne I actually haven't had a bad experience. Most of the people I've. I've met. I've ended up actually hanging out with again and not shooting oh, and just like fun. having tea or like watching a movie or something. Yeah. So It's just like a cool way to. Um, a lot of the people I think that end up being 
uh, like into my work and wanting to model are other creatives. So they're like also photographers or they're designers or illustrators. And like, the, that's always cool to see like how they found it and uh, what the connection is. Hi Shiraz and Darian. It is an amazing conference and unfortunately it's kind of far for you from Iran but I'm really glad that you can join through the live streams and you can also watch the keynote online which is really great. You can watch the whole keynote and see what new products came out from Adobe this year. Hamza says, can you explain your choice of these two colors? Yeah, so one of the color is one of the colors is directly sourced from her swimsuit here, and then um, the yellow is basically or whatever I don't know what would you call this color? Sand. Sand. I just see, okay. I just see I, her swimming, so I think it's sand and water. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's kind of it's basically a variation of her skin tone. So I pulled her skin tone, and then I went to like a deeper uh, color on the. So like I think I did one of these, like. Yeah, see that? Mm -hmm. So like it's it's pretty it's pretty close actually to Yeah. It's just a brighter version. Um, if I did her actual skin tone, I think it'd get kinda lost. Definitely. Um, but that's Tim like, says ochre. That's a good Okay. That's a good word for this color. <laughs> ochre is a nice word. Yeah. Um, it's also something that it's if you if you look through my photographs, it's just like a stylistic thing I do a lot where I like to use a color and then um, use it once more somewhere else in the image. I just think it's, I don't know, I like it. It's sort of yeah. like a hyper stylized look, but. I, my, one of my friends photographed me and I was wearing this sweater that was gold, kind of, gold D. Yeah. And he put a background behind me that was, I guess you could call it ochre as well. It was ochre. kind of this color. And I was like, oh, everything's going to be the same. And he's like, no, you'll see it'll really bring out your features because yeah, yeah. the tones will all be in harmony. And you'll see it'll work really well. And it looked so good. So I think it's a good point that you should make sure that in your composition, you're, you're making all the colors work well together by drawing from each other. And it's like when you're oil painting, you're mixing the paints and you're keeping the base the same so that you have an image that is harmonious. Joseph says, why wouldn't you just use a solid color? Huh. What what's that? It? I have to figure out what's going on in the chat. There's a lot going oh, okay. on. Okay. A solid color for this image, Joseph, or are you asking about something else? Mohammed wants to find out how you know which body parts to edit of the model. Well, um, Brooke hasn't done any editing of the model yet. Yeah, I actually won't really touch her. Um, yeah. She's pretty good to go. Um, you know, if, like, if her clothing was like, she's wearing a swimsuit, so there's no weird like things happening with her clothing. It's really form fitting. But um, if it was something where like someone's clothing was bulging really weird in a certain yeah. place, I might clean that up. Um, or like maybe blemishes. If it was a portrait, I might clean up a little bit. Uh, but pretty light on like modifying people. I don't do like too much with um, like liquefy and whatnot. It's yeah. Not, it's not too much of that. Do you do all of your retouching or do you let other people handle it? Um, I do all of it. I do all of it. One woman show. Maybe someday I I won't. <laughs> so yeah. I, but Hopefully yeah. one day you will Hopefully have people I, working for you. One You'll day be I'll get my wrists back. Big star. <laughs> okay, so Ha, I like that. Hasin says, if you put a text overlay on this image saying never stop dreaming, 
That would be his idea. That's his idea? Yes. It's, it's a it possibility. It does seem like a dream. It is, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Munir. Hi, Mourinho from Colombia. Welcome. Helen says, I'll do your retouch. Wink, wink. <laughs> Amin says, changing the blending mode of the blue color gave life to the design. The blending mode is, that's actually a friend of mine taught me that uh, about a year ago and I actually felt like my head exploded. I had never yeah. done that. So I was always making these like hue saturation things and then trying to like paint out parts of the mask and whatnot. And a friend of mine who, he does a little bit of fashion photography, he's like, you know you can just turn that oh, on color. And I was just it like, saved you so much time. Like, just my mind is blown. So it's, I use it all the time now. It's yeah. probably one of the blending modes on the layers are probably one of the things I use the most often in Photoshop. Hi, Aka in Serbia. Joseph says, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's not done yet. <laughs> McKinley says, I use Photoshop because of the blending mode. Yeah, it's a good reason to. Yeah. So have you kept up with all of the updates from Photoshop and new features? Yeah, yeah. Um, Helen is asking what feature you like best that just came out. Um, I like the, it didn't just come out, but I think it's within the last year, um, the content aware fill mm -hmm. is really great. Um, I worked for a, a like wedding and like, I guess like an event and corporate photographer in New York for about like three years when I first moved there. And so much of what I did for him was like, uh, oh, there's a pole sticking out of this bride's head in the photo, like, we, yeah. need to, we need to remove it. And I always think, I'm like, oh, damn, I wish I had, like, I just wish I had that then. Yeah. Um, to be able to, like, you just literally, I'll have to show you guys if, if there's time. I can show you on just a random image, but it's literally, you make a lasso or, like, a selection around what you want to remove. You go to, uh, up to here, and you go to edit, fill, and can instead of... Can you remove the model? Uh, right it won't. It it won't be probably very accurate because for, there's two big there's, blocks of color. Yeah, because of what I've already done. But yeah, you know, we can do it. Maybe I can show you right. Or like that let me show you, image. Yeah, there's something else I can show it to you for. Maybe let me see. I have a million things floating around on here. <laughs> um, Content aware techniques make your friend's jaws drop to the floor. That's so true. <laughs> Here, let's see if it works for this. This is an image. This is just like a flattened photo, but. Oh, yeah. So if you take and you make this, and you want to get pretty close to the, to the, um, to the okay. object, but you want to leave a little space because it's sourcing the information around it. So you don't want to do like a perfect tight selection with like, you know, with like, um, all your little tools. You want to just kind of leave it a little bit loose. So I use I usually use the lasso. Okay, here's the the big the big reveal. Let's see if it works. Um, yeah, let me add a little bit more over here. It's gonna work. Okay, so if we go fill and it, and then you can see you just select content aware. Boom. Wow. It's it's pretty amazing, um, and I yeah, it's you know pretty flawless. It's pretty flawless, and I might go in and like clean up a tiny bit here where it kind of like duplicated. Yeah. But you can see it's like it's pretty nuts. It's that's probably one of my favorite features. I don't use it a ton, but when I use it, it is so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, let's get back to here. Um, so, okay, so we kind of have this wall built now. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how I went in and made it more uh, like realistic, so it's not so flat. Um, so you can see, this. this is the, yeah. Okay, so the next step that I did here was I made a curves adjustment. Can you 
make your Photoshop full screen? Oh yeah. I just realized that it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad habit. Here we go. So then it'll be bigger. We go in here. I usually option click to have it just affect this wall. So now you can see it's only affecting this wall. Okay, yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll select my gradient tool here, um, click on this, this mask I've made. And you can see that kind of creates a little bit of shadow. And you're starting to get like some depth now. Like it's not so um, like one dimensional. Let me do it a Someone little. Someone said bit. it looked like an iPhone earlier. An like iPhone. she's diving. Oh, diving onto into an iPhone. An iPhone. <laughs> yes, people on the chat can hear the loud voices around us. I'm not sure what's happening because we're stuck in our area. But there's definitely some booth giving away. I would guess someone's giving away t-shirts or something like that. Yeah, it's not, it's, it definitely has the... Right. Maybe free cookies. <laughs> free cookies. <laughs> Jessica, the GoPro booth is that way and the noise is coming from here. I can't tell what it is. Yeah, we have the GoPro booth near us. Ooh. Okay, so you've got a huge brush. Yeah, and I'm just kind of like, just, you know, giving it a little bit of depth so that it's not all one, one, yeah. uh, like, density. So and that's just a curved layer. So we're past the halfway layer. mark now. Yep. Got about 20 minutes. We've shown a lot. It's honestly, when I see your images, when I saw this image, I assumed that there was a lot more that went into it, like a lot more time because I didn't realize where you shot it. Yeah, but yeah. But you already had that angle. So I think it's cool to see that within 20 minutes, we've gotten to that first stage. Yeah, it's yeah. It's become otherworldly already. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of just like uh, enhancing what's already there is is what I'm trying to do most of the time. Um, it helps that this like this her outfit was so cool and the background was cool and the lighting yeah. is cool. And if you have like three cool elements and you enhance them a little, then it's you can make a really like great image. Um, Definitely. So. Um, I guess let's see what else I did. So this is then here, if you guys look, this is actually just a painted layer um, that we that I went in and added. And you can see that's giving her a tiny bit of shadow yeah. around the edge of her body. And again, with the blending modes, this is set to darken, um, which I use a lot for creating shadows um, or like patching. If there's something that I edited that sort of like messed up a shadow, I might go back in here, clean it up, and then set my mode to darken just to even it out, like smooth things, smooth those kinds of th kinds of things out. So that's what that blending mode is set to. Um, a couple of people are asking about the window shadows under her. Did you consciously leave them there I the finished? Oh, you mean right here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The light under her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I left them there on purpose. Yeah. I like the idea of this like mysterious light source. Like You don't really understand where it's coming from. And it doesn't actually make sense that it's even yeah. there because the windows are gone. Um, and I like that illusion. Like that's sort of you're like, where is she? Is she in a pool? Is it like sand? Like we were saying, yeah. water or whatever. So it's it's kind of just like really, I don't know, abstract. I guess it's a good word. It's a good. It is. It's a catch-all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for posting Brooke's website and Instagram, guys. So. Are you known with your full name on all social media? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yes, Maybe. yes, just first, last name. Yeah. That is all. Um, Dari says, I love how Brooke cares about all the little details. Motivating. 
Um, so one other thing is um, after we made this after we made this wall, the one thing I didn't uh, mention was uh, I actually if I if I ever uh, I guess like create something that wasn't already there like this wall, I always go in and add um, a tiny bit of noise to it. It's kind of a good trick uh, if you're ever like painting on an image if you go back in and you add just like it depends on how much grain you had in your photo but usually I notice that mine it usually ends up being like 1.3 it's very specific yeah. but you could do like one point or if you have a really like a darker image that you did that on it might be like four points and you can always preview it but I usually do that and what you can see is it adds like a really slight texture so that like if you zoom in it's not it looks like it could be a real part of the image, you yeah. know, it's not, if you don't Can have you it. Can take it up higher so we see like yeah, what the yeah. extreme would be? Okay. Yeah, well that's too high. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so it doesn't look like you just painted it. Yeah, otherwise it's when you paint on something in Photoshop it gets kind of like flat. And so you have to figure out sort of these little workarounds to bring mm -hmm. back, uh, I guess, the atmosphere. Because you're, I, I, what I essentially did is I removed the atmosphere by painting out the windows. Yeah. And so if I just leave it flat, it almost feels like it's it can't be real, and so I'm I'm all about kind of those subtle details, like adding a, a one point of grain can really or one percent of Definitely. grain can really that made a huge difference. Really make a huge difference. So, That's a great little tip. Um, you don't get that from looking on Instagram. No, you don't. You don't. You also would never notice it. But if I ever print it, it's worth. It's, you'll yes. notice that I did that. It's like, yeah. Instagram. I think people probably don't care that. It has one percent of grain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do exhibitions? Uh, yeah, I do a little bit. Yeah. Um, in the last year, I've had uh, maybe like four, which was like the most I've ever had in a year. That's so awesome. I think it's on the rise. Hopefully, <laughs> I yeah. like doing it. Well, Arthur is asking if you'll ever go to Berlin or Warsaw for an exhibition. So uh, maybe. Yeah, the yeah. Berlin is actually on my like list of places that I want to go and it's at the top of the list. I want to okay. hopefully go next fall. Anyone else from Berlin that is watching? Let us know. Joshua says noise helps with the realism and it also helps to remove banding and gradients. Yes, it is great for that. I don't also. know what that means, but it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of like do you, it's kind of like what's happening here. Like, do you see that? Oh, okay. That's like this this right in this area. It's like if I add a little bit of noise here, it can remove that. Um, All right, I see. And also, if you were like clone stamping or patching something, um, for instance, like if I show you, like you take like an area and you start to get kind of like see those. It's hard to see, but right in here, there's like these weird. Oops. Let me show you a bigger area. Okay. Okay, like things like this, when it starts yeah. to get kind of wonky right in here, you can also use grain to kind of like hide these areas a oh. little bit. It's like a way to even out the texture. I am going to remember this because <laughs> I will use this. Noise is important. Noise is important. Ahmed says, I'm a bit on vacation in Berlin. Does it count? Yes, that's what that Brooke totally wants to counts. do. That totally I want to go, she yeah. She wants to be on vacation in Berlin. I also took two years of German in high school. We just had a question, if you speak German. Oh, really? Yes. Um, only a little bit. I remember <laughs> how to ask for a cheese sandwich. Oh, that's very useful. Which I think is very useful. Yes. And um, like basic conversational stuff, like how are you? Um, do you play sports? Like, you know, okay. the stuff they teach you in high school that you, yeah. that you, that you learned for German. So I was like, yeah. it's You're very basic. Oh. oh, all right. Well, I think everything's in English. They're just uh, asking. Okay. They're just asking. All yeah. right, no problem. That's it, you're gonna leave? <laughs> Bye, Rufus. <laughs> so if you need, if you want to speak German, we have a translator that will show up in 30 seconds. Yeah, just right over there. <laughs> um, so should we should we look at the other image now? Do you think we've covered yeah, this? Yeah, so or? is there are there any other things you want to see about this image or any other questions? Because Brooke has something else to show us. This was a more abstract example where she really changed the surroundings. 
but sometimes she does subtle tweaks that make it into art. Let me know if you're ready to move on to the next thing. Seems like they are. Good? Yeah. Okay. That was really cool. So we'll close these. And so um, the other one I'll go ahead and show you guys is this is this image. This was actually shot in uh, Korea. Oh, um, a few you were in ago. Korea? I was. Cool. Yeah, it was amazing. I went to I did two weeks in Japan, and then. Oh, I really want to go there too. It was incredible. I very much recommend it. Um, delicious food and really interesting art and really nice people it was like yeah. all my it was probably my favorite place I've been I haven't traveled that much but um, I think it's gonna stay at the top for a while wow. <laughs> it was really great Japan at the top and Korea Korea was also fantastic anyone from Japan or Korea okay so did you go to Korea and meet someone and say like can you go and lay on this bench and put your head <laughs> in the grass no, you know, I actually did end up meeting up with someone uh, from through Instagram in yeah. Korea, but this isn't her in the photo. Um, so this is actually my girlfriend who traveled with me. Okay. Um, so she ends up being like a model more than she would like to. Yeah. <laughs> like we're You're like, oh, I see that. Can yeah. you like lay awkwardly on this surface? Yes. Yeah, so, so she she kind of hates it, but she tolerates it. Yeah. So she liked it in the beginning, but it's like five years in now, so she's really sick of it. <laughs> it's like, Ahmed says, at least I'm not the only one with a messy desktop. Oh man, yes. I brought was like, this up. Oh, should I like organize my desktop before? And I said, no, people, everyone's like you and they want to see that you're just a normal human. Yeah, I was going to like just do one of these <laughs> before we started. <laughs> like. Just move it all in there. Oh god, I oh probably. God, oh no, what have I you done? Do <laughs> I slowed everything down. Okay, let's okay, not let's actually do that. Image. Leave it messy. Okay. Let's okay. Look at the image. Um. All right, let's go into here. So, uh, one more time, let me show you guys quickly what we're gonna. So this is the raw image. This is what we're going for. So you can see the clothing was changed. Um, the tones of the greens. Obviously, I cleaned up some of the the uh, scraping on the bench. Oh. Okay. Um, so there's like some cloning. Uh, going back to what someone asked about, um, about like editing the model, I can show you guys in here a little bit of that because uh, she did have like some weird bulgy clothing areas that I did okay. clean up. So if we go, let me take off all of these. Okay, so we're taking off the layers to show you what it looked like at the beginning. Yeah, so you can see like, there's a lot of cleanup on her pants. Oh. And that's something that I do pretty often if it if it requires it. It's not like, like I'm totally changing the model, but I might change like some weird wrinkles and you know, yeah. this area by her leg was pretty just bizarre looking the way that it um, so that's a good example of that. And then also here if you look on the bench, this is just a lot of clone stamping and patch tool and just like a lot of patience in a yeah. couple of hours. I'm gonna say the opposite of what I said earlier. Earlier, I thought it would take longer for us to get to where we got with that previous image. And now I'm really surprised with all the details I didn't think you did. Like, I didn't think you changed anything on the bench or the clothing. But yeah, yeah. There well, are a lot of really small things that you do. Yeah, it depends. Like, the studio shot doesn't have much of this because it's a studio, it's so clean and sterile. Um, but when I'm shooting in environments, like sometimes I'm, I'm always trying to get your focus to go to the subject, yeah. not trying it. Like I don't want you to be distracted by, you know, this weird line along here or mm -hmm. any of that. So I'm always kind of trying to simplify the environment. You can see there's a lot of stuff on the ground that I cleaned up, trash, cigarettes. Yeah. So that's just, again, like a lot of patience just going through there with a brush and like put on a good podcast and go yeah. to town. Like That's a lot. Um, so there's some cleanup here. I think there's like a random yellow flower back here. Um, so that's kind of, I always start with that. If I'm going to clean up anything, that's always my first layer. And then okay. everything else is going on top of that. Hi, Miles. May I have your attention, please? 
the community pavilion will be closing right. in 15 minutes. <laughs> Our pavilion's closing soon, so we have this big announcement. Okay, so what's the next step that you took? So the next step was uh, changing her, her pants color. Um, so you can see, again, I did the, kind of the trick where I sourced one of the colors that was already existing in the photograph. And I went in, and for this, usually, I, I told you guys earlier, I usually change the, the mode to um, color. But for this particular selection, I actually didn't do that because I wanted to play with this lightness tab here Ooh. that's under the hue saturation adjustments that actually lets you darken colors. And I didn't want her, um, her pants to stay this bright. So if I had turned it on color, you, I'll show you guys the difference. If I turn it on color, see how bright her pants get because it's only affecting the color. It's keeping the exposure as is. Yeah. But if I keep it now on normal, then you can play with this with this lightness tab. And I sometimes like to be able to do that. Um, so I darkened her pants so they weren't, you know, the brightest thing in the photograph. Um, and then the shirt color is edited in the same way. With like, and you know, I used sort of a, one of the deeper greens here uh, so that it wasn't like one, one thing. And then here I have sort of like an overall contrast that you can kind of see. Yeah. Do you, did you keep the part of the face that was showing in the end result? Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah, it's still in there. I didn't remember if it was there. Yeah, it's so there. So it's not a decapitated person. It's not a decapitated person, no. Um, and then I think this last thing is this wall tone. And so um, one thing I just realized that I didn't really show you guys that I should is um, after I do all of these adjustments in Photoshop, um, I would say that like 98% of the time um, I save them and then I actually usually bring them into Lightroom where I do uh, some final like color, overall color adjustments and stuff. I mean, um, okay. you can do a lot of, Lightroom is great because there's a lot of, uh, it actually has a lot of masking features now where you can, you can do those things um, using like, you know, these tools using, here, let me make this full screen. Where did my mouse go? Did you see my mouse? Your mouse has disappeared. Yeah, I don't see it, hang on. Oh, there it is, okay. okay. So, um, I was gonna say Lightroom, you can you can do a lot of uh, like cool masking adjustments in Lightroom now using these tools up here. Um, I think it's actually this specific tool. Yes, it's this, it's the mask tool right here. Um, and you can also do some of the other stuff we were doing, like this is uh, kind of the equivalent of like a patch tool or uh, like a clone stamp. So uh, Lightroom is, is has become a huge part of my workflow because sometimes if I'm just mocking up something quickly, I just, want to have an idea of if the image even worked, yeah. I'll sometimes bring it into Lightroom um, surely for the fact that it's quick and it's kind of like less of a commitment, I guess, than making this huge PSD file and really like going in and spending, yeah. you know, 10 hours on an image. Uh, I might take this in here, do a few quick cleanups just to see if I like this even enough to, to actually make it a finished image. Um, so uh, basically what I was going to say is that I always end up when I'm done uh, doing all those adjustments in Photoshop, I usually bring it in here and I have a few different um, presets that I use for a significant amount of my work and it kind of maintains my color palette um, that oh, way. That's cool. So I have, I think, this is like a common one I use a lot. Uh, it's too cool for this image, so I wouldn't use it here. But um, let me show you guys. You can sort of go through here and you can see these are all different presets that I've saved like over the Have you looked at the updates to Lightroom that came out? I don't know so if I we have. have a new everyone should look this up. New version of Lightroom and let us know what you do with it. That's the line that you hear on the keynote. There's so many new releases and we're like, we wanna see what you do because everyone works so hard and then we're like, okay, people can use it now. Um, but Lightroom is integrated across all your devices now and 
Oh, it's, I did. Yeah, I did yeah. see that. Yeah. So I think that it's going to be really a lot easier to work with. Yeah, it's. I mean, I already I use Lightroom as much as I use Photoshop, if not more. I mean, yeah. uh, I also always use it for if I'm sending proofs to someone. I like to run them through Lightroom and just uh, make them close to what I envision before I send them off. Um, so, right. yeah, if you look through here, there's like a bunch, there's endless things, you know, you can do with this. I think I ended up doing something around here was like where, about where I, if we look at the, yeah, so see, that's probably the preset I used yeah, for that. Yeah, very close. Cool. So, so I kind of have a way of working where it's like, this is the final step. Lightroom is always the final step for me. Okay. And, um, and then I export my, my JPEG and kind of go from there. Cool. So Kajag was asking about your inspiration and your ideas for these images. Did you plan this before you got to this setting or did you look at this wall and grass and think like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, so that's kind of what I was talking about uh, a little bit earlier that we touched on. Um, it all, almost all of my on location stuff is is planned like very sporadically. Like it's sort yeah. of like okay, or maybe I see it and I'll take a, a test shot and I'll come back the next day with someone if I have that time. Like this was in Korea when I was traveling, so this was the only day we were here. So this was like okay, we're working with what we have. Which yeah. ends up being also probably, it's, it's a lot of the reason that I end up changing colors later. It's because if I had planned this out for weeks, I would have just put her in green pants and a green yeah. shirt. Um, Much easier. But I saw it and I, and I just like imagined this picture and you know, had a day to shoot it, so we shot it. Yeah. Um, so it varies, like again, if I was shooting something for a client, I, there's way more preparation that goes into that. Um, but sure. personal work, I like to keep kind of loose. Right. Wow, so we saw two examples. One of them, Brooke started out with an image that had, was from a studio and she completely changed the whole aesthetic and made it into an abstract image. And the other one was like a subtle tweak that made it a little otherworldly. <laughs> um, can we see something else that you, like something that was one of your favorite things you've done recently because a lot of people are saying they started following you on Instagram and they're like, oh my gosh, she has so much stuff. There's a lot of like textures and like melting things. Yeah, yeah. Do you like doing that or do you like the more um, subtle changes? I like, I think recently I like the more subtle changes. Yeah. I, I like being able to, there's something cool about creating something otherworldly that's in reality like yeah. it's like you're not you're not necessarily altering reality you're just um, adding to it and I think that's been interesting to me um, awesome. let me see if I have something else we I have a few show. seconds left <laughs> a few seconds yeah okay 40 <laughs> 40 seconds um, I guess this is another thing that I've done recently um, that I was really happy with uh, and this is shot in a swamp and in Queens. Wow, this <laughs> is in Queens? This is in Queens, yeah. This this park I used to go to. I haven't been to that area of Queens. Yeah, well it's not usually there, this park I used to go to, or I still go to, uh, It this area kind of flooded and turned into this weird swampy wow. area. Um, That's really awesome. Well, we only have a few seconds left, and this was our last stream from Adobe Max, and Brooke Di Donato showed us some amazing work that she's doing and took us through her process. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, thank you for having me. We'll see me. you all at the next thanks, live. Thanks, guys. Thank you.